this talk is about web applications and NPM. And so I'm going to do my best to kind of cover the surface and a little bit of depth of um, what we get with NPM. So first of all, it comes with Node.js. Uh, you download Node.js, you get that version of NPM that comes with Node. Um, and what does it do? It organizes your external packages. So despite all the wonderful things you get with Node out of the box, it's not enough to build everything. And um, if you're interested in building your tools from scratch, you can do that with Node alone. But chances are um, the tools that you're thinking of building already exist. And if they already exist, then you can find them here on the NPM registry. And I just pulled one example up here, but you can actually search for any type of package by the type of package or the name of it. In this case, I actually found this by um, searching logger. Um, and you can see we have an exact match of somebody's logger package, but um, we also see ones like Morgan, which is really popular. And then I clicked on uh, Bunyan just a second ago, but let's take a look at Morgan. Um, on the NPM registry here, npmjs.com, um, we'll see the full um, list of packages that are available for Node projects. So you can see here, this is pretty popular, 2 million downloads a week. Um, I've used this before. It's great for using in your project. Um, instead of writing console log statements saying, you know, the range of this video is this many bytes, you can actually use this package to write uh, more intelligent log statements. So it's some good documentation here to tell you that if you use this uh, tiny parameter, it, it does the log statements are smaller, or you can specify exactly what you want to log from the request in, in a web application, such as the request method, like if it's a get method, put, post, the URL, status code, all that stuff. So this is helpful because as you're getting into coding and development, you also need to uh, debug and these log statements help you figure out what went wrong. You need NPM. So even if you don't plan on using external packages, you need NPM to initialize your project. So without NPM, you're just gonna be writing these index.js files and running these short snippet pieces of JavaScript. Um, but that's not enough um, because you will want to initialize your project with a package JSON. And let's talk about that now. So let's get out of this project now and, and let's talk about building our own NPM package. So currently I uh, entered this new folder and I took the liberty to call this folder X for STR, which is X for string. And um, I had an idea to build a package um, that has a JavaScript module that converts strings into a bunch of X's. So if you can think of, you know, how sometimes you see a passwords represented in different ways to hide the actual contents of the password. Um, here, I'm going to do that by converting all the elements of this word of the password into X's. Um, and this is an empty folder. So let's go into VS Code and start building this from scratch. So one of the first things we want to do is since we're dealing with this new project, um, we want to, yes, create an index.js entry point, but also initialize this project. So let's go into four. Um, the actual folder name doesn't really matter much, but we do care about, about the project name. So um, on the slides we saw, we have npm init to initialize our project. And right away, it's going to give you this prompt and tell you that the pr package name is the same as your folder name. Um, and it, I do want it to be similar, but I don't need that number four in front. So I'll just paste this in and call this x4str. Um, we can also specify the version. Since we're starting fresh, we don't need a version here. Description, um, a library to convert strings to x's. Our entry point is index.js. And we could add some test commands. We can specify a GitHub repository, which I don't have for this right now, and some keywords like node, string, x. And then for author, I can put my name in here. And license, I can use the default license, but you can also specify um, other licenses like MIT license, and, or if you have a proprietary uh, code that you don't want to give out, you can do that as well. 
So in the end, it's going to print out this JSON object and say, does this look OK? Um, these are mostly default options, and that's OK. So I'll hit Enter. And we're done here. And what we get is in this folder for underscore x underscore for string, we have our index.js, but we also have this newly created, auto created file called package.json. And this comes with a few things the name, version, description, our entry point, which is our main property, our key. And we have scripts, which are very useful for defining different scripts that you want to run to build your project, run specs, um, anything at all. You can actually customize those or use specific ones with other projects. Uh, in this case, we're not actually going to use this. And so we can actually remove as much as we want from this file. This is just a JSON object. So I'm just going to delete that. Uh, we have our keywords and then author and license. So this is a, a basic description of what our project offers. Um, so this will be helpful if we put this online and somebody wants to use this project. But in particular, when we do publish this app, this uh, package, um, NPM registry will need this information. So in our index.js, let's keep this short and export a function for converting strings to x's. Great. So how do we do that? Module dot exports equals, and we can just make it equal to a function. And we'll say, let's see, if we get a string. We want to return some representation of that string. So first, let's just make sure this is, in fact, a string. And we can do that by casting whatever value we get here as a string, creating a new string. Um, then we want to get the length of that string. And then we want to use the number of characters that we get from this to build a new array. So now we have an array of length equal to the string's length. And we'll fill that array with x's and then join the contents of that array with an empty string. Cool. So that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a lot of packages that do very simple things. And sometimes when it's simple, it's really useful and people start to use it. Um, but for now, I'll keep it simple like this. Let's test this out. We can actually test it by going into our REPL environment, the sandbox click node. And then just like before, I'm going to require, let's actually set this to something. Let's say const um, x for string is equal to require our local index file. Great. And then let's create a new string. I'll say string is equal to, maybe I'll make this more interesting. I'll say my password is, so let's say this is my complicated password and I don't want anyone to see it other than people watching the stream. Um, oh, can't do that. I didn't wrap it in quotations. Cool. So our password is this complicated hash of some sort. And now we want to test our new um, x for string. And we'll say our password. There we go. So we converted this hash into a bunch of x's. And we can see that this does, in fact, work. If I put my name in here, we get three x's. So again, maybe not super useful function, but someone might find a use for it. So let's stop there and now try to publish this package. So back in my slides here, I said that at the end, um, we have npm login and npm publish. These are the two commands that you need to publish your package. Um, if you haven't created your npm account yet, then you'll need to do that first. And then you can run the login command. Uh, but once you're actually connected, you can just run npm publish. So let's quit our REPL environment and run it again, npm publish. There we go. So it's going to be running this and pushing this up to my account, and we're done. So what do we have at the bottom here? We have x4 string version 1.00. Great. So that's it. Um, it's not published. So let's, let's take a look. For, let's, let's try and find this. Let's say x4 string. Let's go back to where we were looking at the Morgan logging library and search for x for string. And there we go. Our 
package published a few seconds ago. No downloads, not, not super popular, but it's okay. It's only been a few seconds. That's cool, this is now public. So if you want to use this, you can use this package, X4 string. So keep that in mind, publishing a package is not very difficult. Um, and it's pretty satisfying when you get a package uh, listed on NPM. Quick word on NPM and its rivals. Um, Yarn is its biggest rival. There are a few others, but you'll mostly hear about Yarn if you haven't used other package management libraries. Um, there is a link here that compares the two, but generally keep in mind, uh, Yarn was developed by Facebook um, and as a result has a lot of Facebook community driven kind of behind it, just like React has. Um, so it has some resources there. Um, it also was aiming to offer a little bit better performance, a little bit better dependency management, meaning how you handle the packages that you install, uh, in which case it started with this deterministic approach, which says that the packages you install, the order in which you install them remains the same each time, which is important in certain cases when you override certain JavaScript. And they also have certain other um, features like pruning your packages. Um, if you have packages that get out of date or cached and you end up building a lot of garbage, um, there's helpful tools for clearing that garbage. But NPM is updating all the time. I mentioned in an earlier slide here that um, in the newest version of, of Node, we get NPM 7. And with that, we get a lot of new changes that kind of keep up to date with what Yarn's trying to accomplish. So ultimately it's really your choice, um, but the syntax is different. So if you choose one, instead of using npm install, you'll be using uh, Yarn add and different commands to start working with your package JSON and your Yarn lock file.